All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get on into the benchmarks. We'll get this knocked out, uh, and we'll see how graphics cards compare from the 980 Ti, which launched in 2015, to today and see how things aren't quite what everybody thought. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and check all that out. I'm very excited. So let's get on into it. Um, if you're interested in the test bench, it's the same one that I've been using, but in the video description down below, we have the test specs and all that sort of stuff. Real quick, i9-13900K, 5.7 gigahertz all core, 5.0 on the ring. Um, we were using 32 gigabytes. I used both the Kingston and the um, Acer Predator Vestas, just depended on the day. They're running at 7600 DDR5, CL34, 45 nanoseconds. So pretty darn fast on the DDR5, so we wouldn't bottleneck anything. So alrighty guys, let's go ahead and jump on over. All right, so kicking things off as usual with Cyberpunk 2077. Remember we did high preset because we started with a 980 Ti, and in reality, high preset is what I recommend using anyway. So there's too many numbers to really go over everything. So we're just going to take a look at some of the highlights. And the 2080 Ti is going to be a standout highlight throughout all of this. So the big thing that I really want to compare to, we do have the 4090 and 3090 in there, but is the A770, the 3060 Ti, which if you want to know what a 3070 is, add about five, maybe 10% to this and the 6700 XT, which are supposed to be on par. Well, not so much in this game at 1080p. Then we jump on over to 1440p, you have 70 on the 1% low compared to 59, 35 on the A770, uh, and then 56 on the 6700 XT. 4K, pretty much all fall apart besides the 4090. So we already pretty much knew that. Uh, 4090 is the 4K monster. All right, Crisis Remastered. This one's a little bit more boring as everything's kind of tied together until you get to the RTX 3090 and then, of course, the 4090. These jump up quite considerably. And my guess is this game just really, really loves <clears throat> super high memory bandwidth. As we can see, the 2080 Ti is also ahead of the 6700 XT, 3060 Ti, and A770. Uh, and then, of course, we get a big jump to the 3090 and the 4090 at 1080p. And then it's pretty much the same sort of story over here at uh, 1440p, although the uh, 3090 and the 2080 Ti, not too terribly much different there. Um, and then 4K, once again, 4090 is the only viable card. Gotham Knights, we have the 2080 Ti coming in at 1080p, 129 FPS on the 1% low, which is pretty good. In this game, however, we do see the 6700 XT does take a little bit of an advantage at 132. And then we have the 3060 Ti at 121. And then we see that both the 3090 and 4090 are limited by the system. This is either system RAM or single thread performance. It's hard to tell. Uh, either way to 146 FPS on the 1% low. Bumping up to 1440p, the 30 or the 2080 Ti is at 93 FPS, smokes the 6700 XT as that drops all the way down to 76. Uh, and then we have 109. And now we see the gap with the 4090 up to 150. So jumping on over to 4K, you're still getting about 60 FPS with the 2080 Ti, whereas the 6700 XT falls down to 50. And then we have the 36 Ti at 38. I did not do the A770 at 4K because it's just not a 4K card. Um, then we have the 3090 obviously ahead and the 4090 showing why it costs what it costs at 127 FPS on the 1% low at 4K. All right, and then moving on over to God of War, which I have found to be one of the most demanding for the GPU games of the test suite. It's pretty much solely GPU dependent uh, most of the time, <clears throat> except for maybe when you get to this level. Um, but anyways, the 2080 Ti comes in at 129 FPS on the 1% low compared to the 3060 Ti and 6700 XT at 106 and 102. So that's substantially faster than those two. And then you have 161, 196. Moving on over to 1440p, you have 74 on the 1% low for the 2080 Ti. This is actually about in line. So it actually tightens up with the 6700 XT and 3060 Ti at 1440p, which is kind of interesting. 
Um, then we have 124 and 168. And then looking at 4K, once again, they're all pretty much bunched together. 60, 55, 54, and then jumping all the way up to the 4090 that gets you over 120 FPS on the 1% low at 137. Hogwarts Legacy is next. The data for the 3090 could not be done. As I've said before, uh, the game updated. I did all of my benchmarks. I couldn't get the 3090 and the 2070 Super in. It updated and the performance numbers changed. So we will take a look at the 2080 Ti that came in at 73 FPS on the 1% low and the 6700 XT not too far behind at 72, but the 3060 Ti falls apart at 59, which is kind of interesting right here. Um, then obviously we have 108 on the 4090 as that's flying away. We can see that that's system limited because the 4090 really doesn't change at 1440p. It's margin of error and doesn't even drop that much at 4K. Uh, at 1440p, we have 63, whereas the 3060Ti, 45, and the 6700 XT falls down a little bit, down to 57. And then 4K, well, just buy a 4090. All right, so moving on over to Modern Warfare 2 2022, 2080 Ti, 75 FPS on the 1% low, 52 for the A770, 62 for the 3060 Ti, and 70 for the 6700 XT. So another solid showing for the 6700 XT. Uh, 3090 up to 94, it's not really that big of a gap when you look at it. And then you have the 4090 at 181 FPS. So yeah, once again, it's in a league of its own. Uh, then we have the 2080 Ti 1440p, unplayable at 49. All of them are unplayable. You got 125 on the uh, 4090. That one's great. 3090 is basically the bare minimum for that 1% low. Uh, and then at 4K, once again, 4090 for this particular game. All right, now this one's kind of interesting. So this is the Plague Tale Requiem. We have the 2080 Ti. Look how tight that is, that 1% uh, that low. It's really nice to see that. Most of the GPUs have it besides the A770. They're pretty tight. These guys aren't. Uh, but all of these mid-range cards are. So anyways, 78. That goes up to 65 or down to 65 on the 3060 Ti and 61 on the 6700 XT. So that's a pretty big gap between these guys. 3090 has a significant advantage. And then the 4090 even more so. Uh, moving on over to 1440p, you're still getting about 60 FPS on average with the 2080 Ti. Both the 6700 XT and 3060 Ti fall apart. You get about 100 FPS with the 3090 and 130 with the 4090. And then taking a look at 4K, in reality, unless you want a very cinematic experience, you want a 4090 or better. Now, what's interesting is these tied. Now, obviously, the 4090 is faster. This is clearly due to a bottleneck somewhere else in the system running at 4K, which is very, very interesting because usually raising the resolution doesn't have too much of an impact except for memory bandwidth. And my guess is because we have G6X at 384-bit and G6X at 384-bit. And my guess is that's the reason why these are virtually the same. The memory bandwidth on the 4090 isn't significantly faster. Next up is Spider-Man, and we have the 2080 Ti at 1080p coming at 123 FPS on the 1% low, so that's very good. All the GPUs do pretty well here. Even the A770 is coming in at 87, 110 on the 3060 Ti, 6700 XT at 93. So the NVIDIA cards are preferred in this particular game. Uh, we have the 4090, however, not really pulling too far ahead, but this is likely due to a CPU and system limitation. So I would kind of ignore these till we get to the higher resolutions for a real performance gap. Uh, moving on up to 1440p, 2080 Ti, still good at 100 FPS on the 1% low. 36 Ti is doing pretty well at 93. 6700 XT is still very playable at 81. Even the A770 at 70 FPS, very playable in this particular title. Once again, we're gonna ignore these guys until you get to 4K. Uh, moving on over to 4K, all the graphics cards are pretty good. If you have VRR, you're going to be doing all right. 75 on the 1% low for the 20, uh, 2080 Ti, 36 Ti at 65, and the 6700 XT below 60 at 57, but barely. And then we have 91 for the 3090, so that's a pretty decent gap between the 2080 Ti and 3090. And then you have the big gap between the uh, 3090 and the 4090 going up to 139 FPS. So basically this is locked and you need faster CPUs and RAM to really see how fast 
Uh, the 4090 really is in this game. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, high preset. We have the 2080 Ti at 141 at 1080p. It's pretty much on par with the 6700 XT. It's pretty close anyway at 129. Uh, the 3090 kind of fell apart on this one for some reason. Not sure why. Could be due to some other limitation. Don't know, but the 4090 doesn't care. And that one screams ahead at 274. Taking a look at 1440p, the 3090 does take a little bit of a lead. 33%, simple math, I like that, uh, over the 2080 Ti in this one, whereas it has a decent advantage over the other guys. And then, of course, you have the 4090 just kind of doing its own thing. Then at 4K, with VRR, you might be able to get away with some of these guys lowering settings, but in reality, you kind of want a 3090 level graphics card with 74 FPS. And then, obviously, the 4090 at 138. Well, no compromises needed there. Warhammer. Alrighty, guys. So we've kind of gone through a bunch of these. We're just going to kind of skip to the end here. Uh, once again, if you are a member, I, you're going to get access to all this data. I will put up the Excel sheet. So we're just going to kind of skip on through. We hit the ones that were super interesting to me, and we're going to go to the big charts. So anyways, 10 game, 1% low average. This is at 1080p. We can see the 980 Ti came in at 53. The Vega 56 was basically on par. 1070 kind of fell off a bit for a comparable GPU. 1080 Ti at 70. And then we have uh, 78. So the 5700 XT is actually a good bit ahead of the 1080 Ti. And so is the 2070 Super at 80. See the large jump up with the 2080 Ti at 114 FPS. The A770, it's kicking around. So if we take a look, that's pretty much on par with the 1080 Ti at 1080p. It's in the same ballpark. Uh, and with future driver updates, I expect this to probably land somewhere right in here. Um, but anyways, it's doing its thing. And then we have the 3060 Ti edges out the 6700 XT by a little bit there. And then the 3090 jumps up to 126. And then, of course, the 4090 says, all right, guys, we're, we're doing something else now. So not a, that big of a gap here, mega gap here. 1440p, which is what we will analyze further. So I'm going to skip straight to 4K. All right, so taking a look at the 4K numbers, these are all the GPUs I did at 4K, because honestly, anything slower than these, I wouldn't even bother. Um, so 2080 Ti comes in at 51 FPS on the 1% low on average. That's pretty good. So with G-Sync on these, you know, AAA slower titles, that means most of them are going to be reasonably playable. 3060 Ti and 6700 XT at 39 and 38, not so much. Um, the 3090 is doing pretty well over... Uh, 60 FPS at 66, and then, of course, the 4090 average 1% low on all of these more modern games is 107 at 4K. So that's why I say this is the 4K card. You just buy that and don't worry about it. Okay, so let's go back to the 1440p numbers because this is pretty, this is where things get interesting. So let me make sure you guys can see this because we're going to do some maths. Okay, so starting with the 980 Ti, we already did this in previous videos, but we're going to continue to do that. So going to the 1080 Ti, let's see what the generational uplift is. So you have uh, 52 divided by 38. So we have the 1080 Ti coming in at 37% faster. A lot less than people thought it was. Basically, this is just a lot faster than people thought it was. Um, mostly because if you compare the reference models to reference models, you're not going to see performance like this. But if you tune your systems, this is the performance you can get. You too can have this performance. All right, now, here's the big one. Going from the 1080 Ti to the 2080 Ti. Bum, bum, bum. 83 divided by 52. This one is 60% faster. So this is about double what people thought this gap actually was. And yeah, this is going to be the biggest number we see here, boys. So, 60% there, and then let's go 102 divided by 83, so 3090 over the 2080 Ti, 23% faster. So, Ampere, so far, is uh, the smallest uplift that we have seen, which is also probably going to be very, very surprising to most of you guys. All right, and then let's do the 4090 uh, and the 3090. We're going to actually use the 4K numbers for these because the 4090 is just that baller. Uh, so 107 divided by 66. 
then we have about 60%. So this one is a little bit higher at 4K. I did the numbers on, all on 1440p yesterday and just dawned on me, checking 4K makes more sense. So basically we're getting another 2080 Ti level uplift with the 4090. And in reality, I bet you we're still CPU system bound. So there might even be more legs in this one. So yeah, those are the performance gaps uh, from each flagship from each generation. And if we go back to this one, you can see how the supposed just as fast cards are. Well, no, even if you add five, 10% to this, you're still nowhere near this level. So 6700 XT is not equal to a 2080 Ti. Uh, it is obviously faster than 2070 Super, so saying 2080 Super would probably be accurate somewhere in that particular range. Um, and then where's the other interesting ones? Well, the 1080 Ti being slower than these guys, we already discussed that in a previous video. That I found very interesting. It's on par or slower. Uh, and then the 980 Ti actually outpacing the 1070 and the Vega keeping up with the 980 Ti or either way, this is pretty interesting stuff. And then of course, if we go back to the 1080p, the fact that these cards are still viable for 1080p high gaming um, with VRR is very interesting to me. So yeah, there you go. So tons of GPUs, tons of benchmarks, took me a very long time to get all of that data, but I found that extremely interesting and it really puts in perspective how fast these graphics cards actually are, how much of a generational uplift we're actually getting, not just the out of the box stock experience, but what the graphics cards can actually do when you go all right, we're gonna throw as much power through this thing as we possibly can within limits. I used air cooling. I didn't do anything too exotic and I didn't like ramp up the fan speeds to where it was unplayable. Everything was done under normal. I would use this 24 seven condition to get the most performance out of my hardware. Um, I did use better AIB models. So you can check down below. I listed all the ones that weren't in previous videos, but each video has what models I use and they're usually higher clocked models um, and had some beefier coolers like for the win threes and things like that. But even still, you can get most of the performance you're seeing here <clears throat> with cheaper models. So anyways, I found it interesting. We now know how big of a deal everything is. The reason why the 4090 looks real good is because everybody is now really testing at 4K and you can see that big gap. The reason why the 2080 Ti was so limited was that 250 watt cap that Nvidia put on it. When you run the thing at 320 watts, which is what I ran mine at, which is the same as the 3080, you can see that it's probably not a heck of a lot slower than an RTX 3080. And had people known that, they probably wouldn't have sold their 2080 Ti's. So that's why I'm doing videos like this. So this way you now know how fast things actually are and whether or not you need to upgrade. You have all the data. And if you are a member and you are in the Discord, um, you will have access to the Excel sheet. So that's a perk for you guys. You can go ahead and hit the join button down below if you wanna join or become a Patreon member, you can get in there as well. Sorry, I gotta get a little shilling out of the way, but that's a nice little perk. You guys are getting hundreds of hours worth of data and you can use it however you wish. So yeah, I'm glad we're, we're done with this and uh, I'm gonna go chat with the chat now.